This is Dave from the Dave EHT3 here with another RC Heli tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about servos and how to change their gear trains. I have a couple tips that are going to really help you out and make this an easy process for you. I know uh, being a first timer looking at one of these it can seem kind of complex what's in here and daunting and you don't want to you know tackle it you're afraid to and I'm going to shed some light on it that's going to make it simple and hopefully help you guys out. First step is you want to test your servo. Um, usually you just turn the servo horn on the output shaft, check for coggy gears, things clicking, uh, gears that won't turn, gears that are stuttery, end play or play in your gear mesh. If you have a lot of play in your gear mesh that could indicate worn gears. Um, and if your servo is not even working at all and you give it power, you can always take off your bottom cover and check that your positive, negative, and your signal wire are correctly attached to their corresponding leads. Maybe I'll go into that in a later video. I'm not, you know, I don't know a whole lot about servos. I try to be knowledgeable on what I need to know, and I know how to change out the gear trains, solder new leads onto the positive, negative, and signal wire. Um, I typically wouldn't dare venture any further and now, though I am researching the subject. I strive to give you guys better videos, and part of that is educating myself further in the hobby. So here we go, a quick easy video on the uh, changing the servo gears. First you want to carefully remove your output shaft. By the way, this servo is good. This was on uh, that, that old plank, the old SIG. The servo is good. This was the rudder servo. So go ahead and we'll take off the output shaft carefully by wiggling, you know, two sides, get on two corners, or use the screwdriver method I showed you in the quick tip. So put, set that aside. Then when removing your, your servo case, the top part of the case, you can remove the bottom too if you want. I can just keep that on so it's kind of protected. It may fall off, but when you're removing this top cover, it's super important to push against the output shaft or when you lift this off the pressure on the plastic servo case will help to lift the gears with it especially on a cheaper servo uh, if you have metal case you don't have to worry about that but we're going to go ahead and light pressure on the sides and a lot of pushing on the output shaft careful not to have that raise off with all the gears look at that they're all still in there sandwiched correctly um, do be careful some servos have uh, like this post is removable in this servo to get that bottom gear out. Um, some servos have washers in here. Some servos are bearing supported and will have a bearing in here that rides on this inner shield here that it's just ball bearing supported so there's no play or slop in the servo. Okay, so we remove this cover. First thing I like to do is inspect the cover for any foreign matter such as plastic gears, uh, shavings of metal, uh, stuff like that. You really want to make sure that servo case is clean. Okay, make sure there's nothing in there because when you put your new gears in, that stuff when you put your grease in your new gears will be allowed to ride around in this gear train and ultimately wreak havoc during flight and you could crash your aircraft uh, subsequently. So you want to avoid that. Make sure that both your top case and once we remove these servo gears you want to make sure that the bottom plate is super clean. Okay, that's really important. So, on to the quick little tip I have here. I've already pre-written down what I typically do, just like I had the screws out to make this run a little smoother. Um, as you'll notice, top, bottom, left, and right. That's the general layout of this servo. Now, on other servos, that differs. I've actually got three or four different types of layout trains in the different servos I own. So it's important to write this out. I chose a simple plastic gear servo, but servos come in titanium, uh, aluminum, metal gear, brass, anything, you name it, you'll find it. So, But this was meant to be an easy, helpful video for a newbie to, or even an experienced person who's never really dove into servos, you know. Uh, so here we go with it. We're going to remove this top gear, and when you remove it, Go ahead, keep it in the same orientation, but you want to kind of inspect it, kind of. You want to look over every gear and make sure each gear is fine. Make sure there's no chips out of them, none of the teeth are worn or, uh, you know, stripped from a crash or hard torque roll, maybe. 
and remember the orientation go ahead and lay down the gear in the same orientation in its corresponding spot then you've got this gear right here go ahead and remove that um, obviously I've already inspected these but I'm just for demonstration you know now this gear there's an important thing to note um, it's it's nice to have a servo meter okay and one of my chargers actually has a servo meter in it and it will actually uh, center your servos a servo center or something I've never used it but you'll notice this this thing that looks like an, an 8 or something but that tab has to face a certain orientation and when you put this back together it's important that that's in the correct orientation so as you get full deflection of the output shaft when you're turning your control horn with your servo you want that to have its full 180 degree deflection Okay, so remember that orientation when you put it together you may have to put it together then take it apart because you're not getting full deflection or you'll notice in assembly the servo gears were kind of not sandwiched right maybe one's rubbing and it's really hard to move so this takes some trial and error that's why we have this laid out so it's nice quick and easy you can take it apart put it to get back together test it out make sure it works and all the while you're not being confused of where these gears go so then we'll lay down the left gear then this bottom one is tricky inside here there's like a, a cutaway in this plastic and you've got a gear in here that's protected they're trying to keep this simple I see and you may need something to get underneath this this gear I'm gonna try my fingernail alright and you notice the post came out okay and remember the orientation it was like that that's the bottom so you can go in remove all of the excess grease and this is white lithium grease by the way plastic gears make sure it's you know try not to have petroleum based grease products in your plastic electronics or on Delrin or anything else that's not metal so it's looking pretty clean you may want to take some alcohol or something go ahead and clean out the excess oil again look inside every crevice make sure there's not a little piece of nylon from the gear that's you know stuck anywhere because in flight that could come out and you're going to just restrip your gear and crash your plane or your heli so let's get on with reassembly starting in the opposite order the last one was the bottom but now it's the first one remembering the orientation you want to make sure you get a firm hold on this and then push that shaft down I like to get a lot of pressure on it and make sure it's seated properly and that gear is sitting squarely okay it's not tilted or cocked in any direction so then we're going to go ahead and grab our right gear I believe and you could write the order on these you know one two three and four and then reverse it now you see that gear meshes there and we're going to twist it around make sure it's got a good catch in there okay it feels really nice there's no chattering or anything the next one was the left with that like number eight that tab on it and we're trying to you know keep the orientation where we think it was I was moving around it could be anywhere right now I'm going to try for right there then this top one go ahead and mesh this right in there and push it all the way down so that it meshes with that gear and then that gear at the bottom it's important to really look at this and understand how these go together don't try to just jam it all in there and break teeth in the process of repairing it okay be gentle with these you don't want to be really hard on them okay now that that's put back together we can get rid of this I'm going to go ahead and take out my lithium grease and this you don't want to use a lot of you want to be very minimalistic on this because these gears move around a lot and this will get in the mesh very very good trust me you'll see it everywhere the servo gets warm and when it gets warm this stuff becomes like a liquid in here and it pretty much just moves all about especially if you're flying real crazy that, that stuff will get everywhere so you don't want to use a whole lot of that and have it squirting out all over your servo and you don't want to mush it around you don't want to touch the servo at this point you want to get the cover on as quickly as possible because dirt and grime can get in here cat hair and also cause problems with your servo so here we go with the top cover home stretch now we're going to go ahead and try to push it down hopefully it yep it's seated nice push down on the output shaft real good now we've got our sandwich 
Now before you go ahead and just jam your screws back in, let's go ahead and, and put the output shaft on. I believe that was the cause of the aileron crash where I lost aileron. I was using that hole and crack. And as you see, we've got a nice deflection. It's a little it's going a little further that way. So what I would do is go back in there and readjust that. And it seems like it there we go. It seems like it's going a little bit further that way than that way. So we'd go back in here. I'll do it real quick. Pop this open. First, let's center it. Alright, right, that was all the way to one side. So we'll say there, all the way to there. There's center, there's there, there's there. Okay, so we're going to go back to center. Pull this off. What we want to do is move. We can just take this gear out. Just move this one click over like that. Then we put this back together again. Put our case back on. And now I think we should get full deflection. There in there and it looks like it's perfectly even so that's that I hope you guys found this helpful uh, going to Urcha next week so I won't be around to do any uh, RC Heli tutorials uh, I will be uploading videos on Monday I got Monday off and uh, back to grind on Tuesday I want to thank everybody for watching and making this channel successful uh, we owe it all to you guys. You guys are the ones that make it happen. So keep watching. I hope you found this enjoyable and helpful. And enjoy. We'll uh, talk to you on Monday. Peace.